Okay. Um, well, um, this presentation is about the tool that we develop uh, together uh, with uh, uh, to, to DAF, uh, Digital Competence Center. Monal uh, is here uh, at, at the back. He's also ITC at the same time, and, and uh, for your research data. Uh, and the idea is to create a better interoperability between uh, research data repositories uh, and the digital uh, research environments. Um, we want to create such a connection because we see some problems. So research data, as you know, and as, as we discussed before, is produced during the whole research life cycle, but data publication, in fact, uh, happens only at the end, and usually really at the last minute. So basically there is no time usually available to create a metadata, uh, create a data set in a, in a correct way, in a reusable way, but most of the time people just dump it uh, to data repositories, and they dump a lot of data, so especially nowadays. It's quite uh, common to have gigabytes of uh, zip archives, which are there uh, for reuse purposes, but in fact, they are not very much reusable, and they lack important metadata. So and at the same time, it takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, but we have a virtual and digital uh, research environments where, for example, the Jupyter Lab was given a lot, a lot during the presentations as an ex example, which researchers use to, to create the data. And in fact, they are well connected with some uh, infrastructure like source code repositories. So we have Git, we have Git extensions that are available so people can easily clone research software, they can run, they can modify, or they can publish their own software from their working environment very easily. But unfortunately, this is not the case for research data publication. So, and they have to go to a website, they have to manually enter information, and they have to upload their data, which is sometimes really quite big. So uh, as a solution, uh, there might be different solutions, of course. What we propo proposed uh, was uh, to create a JupyterLab extension, which will allow people to take a snapshot of, of their research data and publish it in a data repository easily, especially for, for big data purposes. So we got funded from NW Open Science Fund, and, and we proposed to develop a methodology to integrate virtual research environments to research data repositories, create the extension, and also demonstrate it uh, at the existing operational uh, research data re repository. So more information, if you want to have a look, you can see uh, the proposal because it is publicly available. So our team mainly com com initially composed uh, of uh, four people, as I mentioned myself, Manuel, uh, we have uh, also Jose uh, from TU Delft, and initially we had also Connie Claire. Uh, she was the community manager of 40 research data, and on purpose we had a community manager as a core team member because uh, we think that a team, team science approach is really necessary, especially for the sustainability of the software. So we need to start creating a community from the beginning, but not after developing the software. So that was the idea. Unfortunately, we lost Connie very early in the, in, in the beginning because she changed uh, her, her position. Uh, but um, eventually, uh, uh, we hope still to, uh, to continue on uh, community development activities. So uh, what we had, uh, after some discussion, uh, we come with, up with an idea not to develop a JupyterLab extension, but a tier-wise approach. So start with a, a low-level Python package, which we call now Fairly, uh, to allow a, a standard um, a API to access the research data repositories, which allows also further development for, by, by third parties. We converted this to, into a command line interface like Git, which you can use in your terminal to, to clone the data sets or, or upload your data. And the last step became JupyterLab, which is a JupyterLab extension which allows you to easily create uh, data sets or clone the data sets. Um, and uh, we also extended our support. Um, the idea was to show and demonstrate at 40 research data, but even initially we managed to support two different platforms. One is Figshare, which is in fact uh, at the behind uh, uh, the platform used by 40 research data, but also by many other research data repositories, but also Zenodo, which is also one of the biggest. So what are the features that we have? So first of all, the, the, the tool set allows very quick uh, data set cloning. With one command, you can, you can clone a data set locally with all metadata and all the files. And it also allows automatic extraction of data sets. So if there is a, a zip archive which is two gigabytes in size, including hundreds of directories, it, it creates that directory structure automatically when you clone the data set. 
Uh, because the metadata is uh, stored locally, you can modify and edit the metadata set also very, very, very easily locally. So metadata it becomes, in fact, a part of data set, so, but not something that you enter through the forms and uh, virtually attach to, to, to the data set. Uh, the system also allows quick data set publication. Again, one, one command uh, um, uh, creation of data set records. Um, as well as unattended uh, uh, file uploads. Uh, so uh, especially for high number uh, of, of data files and also big, large data sets, it can automatically um, um, create a difference between the local data set and the remotely uh, available copy and uploads only the files that are necessary. So it, it also somehow optimize this, uh, this processing. Um, so which allows a smart synchronization. So uh, very shortly, uh, how it works. So basically, you import. Uh, this is an example of Fairly. So you import a Fairly uh, pa package. You 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 uh, call the create data set by indicating a local path. Then you set the metadata, um, um, which you can also use a text editor to edit because it's a YAML file. So uh, you can also edit, and then you indicate which files you want to include by 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 indicating the pattern. So you can say star.csv, uh, it, it will include all the CSV files in that folder, or you can also include subfolders, etc. And just by saying upload to Fortier, the system will automatically connect the Fortier research data repository, create the data set record, upload the metadata, and upload all the files uh, to, to the data repository. And if you want to change something, you can very easily change by using standard Python uh, pro properties. And by calling synchronization, you can synchronize to the local data set. So because there is no time for, for the demonstration, I will just give an example. So this is a quite recent data set that is published at uh, Fortier Research Data. It, it is a zip archive, as I mentioned, with several directories in, inside, because uh, uh, Figshare doesn't support directory structure. In fact, the only way to upload a directory-based data set to the repository is to create an archive. So this is not uh, the mistake of the researcher. It is what they have to do, unfortunately. So that's a limitation. And in fact, we are trying to get rid of th this limitation. So let's say you want to create a local copy and work on it. Because right now, also, the only way to work with research data is to download it. So there is no other way. So how you do? So you import fairly. And then you say fairly data set and just provide the URL address of the data set the system automatically recognizes at which research data repository the data is located. It automatically creates the a proper client for that. In this case, this for you, that means it creates a fixed share a client, and then creates a lazy a data set object uh, as, as, a, a, as a Python, Python object. What you can do with this, you can store it. So you just indicate which, um, I Yoko mentioned actually that we have this, Maybe I can use it. <laughs> so uh, you just indicate the path to store, and you say you want to extract. So and because this file, this, this data set was uh, uh, just a single zip file, the system automatically downloads the data, put it under this local directory, and extracts the zip archive, and uh, provides you a complete data set to work on. And if you want to upload it to another repository, you can do it. You just, you, you just use the local set, and you say, I want to upload this to Zenodo. And in that case, the system connects to Zenodo, uploads the metadata, uploads all the files, and brings you a remote Zenodo data set. So it's so simple. Um, yeah? Um, it's open software, software, so we have the GitHub repository for Fairly and Jupyter Fair. Jupyter Fair uh, is, uh, it has the same cap capabilities. It provides a user interface for that purpose that is integrated to JupyterLab. Um, both packages are currently under development, but uh, officially we are in the closing phase of the project, so in a few weeks they will be complete. We have the user documentation and uh, the package is available at the uh, pip uh, package uh, repository, and basically we have also a Twitter account which you can use if you want to connect to us. So basically this is the package, um, and a quick uh, presentation ab about, about that. Um, yeah, if you have questions, I will take them. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yes.
content time? Well, it, right now it's completely insensitive, so it doesn't check the type of, 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 of data. Uh, normally, it might be possible to, to extend the package by providing some um, metadata extraction capabilities depending on the, metadata, uh, on the data type. So if it's a GeoTIFF, it can extract, extend, etc. But that one is not implemented yet. Um, yeah, could be. That's possible. <laughs> yes. Yes, but. Yeah. Well, uh, um, it depends on the data repository. Some data repositories are, uh, in fact, we have a data um, data stewards who are checking the data. Uh, in, in terms of quality and va validity. They don't comment, of course, about the content, but at least they can provide feedback about the metadata, if it is complete or not. But it is the researcher's responsibility to, uh, to, to, to have that. What is the capacity of the 40U um, uh, server? For That's data? a good question. So um, I don't know, to be honest. So we, we should check with the, with the operator, but uh, I saw that they are hosting uh, 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 at least 50 gigabyte size of uh, zip archive as a single archive. So I think they have uh, sufficient capacity because 40U is just a vitrine. So they are using Figshare and the Figshare is working at the behind and Figshare is a complete cloud-based platform. So I think they have a lot of processing capability. Yeah. At least Sonoro provides you with a, with a DOI for pr pretty much everything that you upload there, right? Yeah, that's correct. If um, you publish, yeah. Okay, so, so is, is the idea that you nevertheless use something like Sonoro as, as an interim storage for your iterative data set development and then when you reach the level that you're happy with publishing, you publish then or? I, um, no, um, well, research data set has, has versioning actually. So basically you, you can publish your data set, uh, get a DOI early in your uh, research project. And uh, if you continue to develop your data set uh, further, then you can publish new versions. And each new version have, ha will have a new DOI that is linked to the original one. So you can always uh, cite uh, specific versions that is possible. Yeah, okay. As I understand, it's about uh, publishing your data set, yeah. but in the FAIR uh, uh, open science, this uh, uh, field or goal, in the end, we would also like to publish our software. So yes. this not at all touched that this area yet about software publishing. Well, uh, in the current practice, actually, there is no difference between uh, uh, software or data. So basically, they are using the same repositories, and they just uh, create a zip archive of the, of, of the source code, and they put it there uh, as if it's the data. And the best case, the repositories, they, they have a specific tools developed. So ju you just provide the URL address of your uh, uh, GitHub repository, and it automatically downloads the code for you. Okay, but for the data set, we only just uh, uh, upload a store, but for software, we would like to be able to uh, interact, what's that? Re reproducible, interactive, yeah. so that sounds more advanced uh, requirements for the software publishing. It should be different, isn't it? Uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, publication, no, because uh, you, you publish a product. So basically, if it, the, the reproducibility of, of, of the result is, is something else. So um, um, it is not a requirement of, of uh, data publishing, in fact. Yes. 